Happy New Year to everyone and welcome to 2018. Oh my goodness, where has the year gone? I say that every year pretty much, but y you wonder where the year goes because it goes by so quickly. Um, 2017 was no exception. It had its ups, it had its downs. Actually, for me, it was a relatively quiet year. 2017 was. It did have a few highlights um, in no particular order because I'm never good at that. Uh, I suppose one of the big highlights was me going to my, oh gosh, sixth national ACB convention? I gotta think now. Was that my sixth one? Let's see. In Reno, Nevada, in July of 2017, I went to Reno for the second time, actually. The uh, American Council of the Blind held their national convention at the John Escuaga Nugget Hotel and Casino there, and I actually went there for the second time. They, the ACB held their 2011 convention in Reno as well, and I was at that convention as well. So in terms of ACB conventions, I've done one, two, three, four, uh, five, I guess. I guess I've only done five conventions. Still, it's quite a bit. Had a good time. Uh, met up with uh, a friend that's just about as geeky as me. His name was John Lipsy. We we uh, hung out as much as we could during the convention. It was great, and we had a, a fellow uh, volunteer who ended up being a good friend of ours. His name is Victoria. Not Victoria. <laughs> God, I, I can't talk. Victor, as in Victor, yes. Uh, Victoria, God. <laughs> Maybe I'm still drunk from last night, except for one problem, I didn't drink anything. Um, yeah, Victor was, was awesome. And, uh, man, that was a good convention. Had a good time. I do have uh, archives of that. Other things that I did during the year 2017. I got a new computer, got a uh, laptop back in April, still have that laptop uh, as of now. I love it. It's an awesome laptop. It's a Lenovo Y520 series. It's got uh, two drives in it basically. It's got a 256 gig SSD drive and a two terabyte main hard drive to put all the media and data that I want there. And uh, I've also of course got my old trusty four terabyte external drive that I bought way back in 2015. I still have that thing. It still works for now. And I uh, love that computer. It works pretty well most of the time. And um, also, that was also the time I went up to Oregon. I did make a trip up to uh, Redmond, Oregon in April. That's in fact where I bought the computer uh, at the Costco there so that I could save on sales tax. That computer was $9.99 out the door and it would have been over a thousand plus had, uh, had I had to pay tax for it. So advantages of being in Oregon. You can buy things at their listed price. Oh, I like that. So that happened in 2017. I got my, got my laptop. I got my, uh, went, got, went, got to go to Oregon. Also got to go as, you know, I play radio a little bit each year, at least I try to. And in March, I went up to Saddle Peak. March, what was it? March 10th, I believe? Yes, it was March 10th. I went up to the top of Saddle Peak on one of my good friend Robert's many visits down. He actually made a few trips down south uh, to Southern California. And I happened to be down there in March. And we hung out and went up to uh, Saddle Peak uh, during that little adventure. Uh, so I did that. And also in 2017, of course, Donald Trump officially became president. I have mixed feelings about that. I like his philosophy, but I don't like the way he like, tries to insult people a lot of the time. He calls the news media fake news. It's not that fake. I mean, it actually happened, so if he doesn't like what the news media is saying, it doesn't make it fake news, it just means he doesn't like it. 
but he th just wants to call it fake news. I don't know what's up with that, but that's been his thing. Um, you know, we won't go into politics here, but uh, yeah, Donald Trump officially uh, first year of uh, presidency will have occurred on January 20th of this year. He will have already gotten through his first year. So that happened last year. And uh, also in 2017, we had the uh, solar eclipse, the big solar eclipse uh, in on August 21st, 2017. Boy, that was uh, that was quite the event. I was not in an area where I could experience the solar eclipse in full. I did know people that were there. <clears throat> they, I, my my good friend Robert and his family got to experience. They were very fortunate to be lucky enough to be. They actually lived at the time. They lived in the path of totality out in Redmond, Oregon. They were kind of right on the edge of it, but they were there. So literally, I mean, he was giving me reports <clears throat> as the eclipse began to happen. He was, uh, you know, how the, how the temperature would begin to drop and the, the nightlife would begin to come out and... Uh, I believe even radio propagation, if you were listening to radio stations that were like within the path of totality, you'd actually be able to hear them just as you might at night. You wouldn't hear all radio stations, I don't believe, that you would normally hear at night, but I believe there was some enhanced, slightly enhanced uh, uh, radio propagation during the solar eclipse. I actually need to go see if I can dig up any recordings done uh, of radio stuff during... Uh, the solar eclipse that might have been interesting to uh, to experience uh, so that was probably the coolest without a doubt the coolest uh, astronomical phenomena that occurred in 2017 and then of course sadly who can forget the tragic mass shooting that occurred uh, beginning of October 2017 when an idiot decided that he was going to turn a festive Route 91 country music festival into total carnage and chaos when he uh, had way more weapons than anybody needed, way more weapons in his hotel room than anybody would ever need, uh, and he started shooting on the crowd below from his 32nd floor sniper's nest, effectively, at the Mandalay Bay there in Las Vegas. And uh, that is very, uh, very uh, catastrophic what he did. A deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history, in modern U.S. history as of, uh, as of now. I sure hope that doesn't change, but you never know. I mean... What he did was insane. I mean, the mass shooting epidemic, is, we've got to do something about that. I've said this for years. I still believe we should do something. I just can't believe that nobody wants to do anything. Let's just kill everybody and just be cool with it. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a rare breed, but I'm way too kind-hearted of a person to want to have everybody killed on this planet. We need more kindness in this world, not, not deaths and destruction. I don't know why we're more apt to do that than we are, you know, God, if we had as much, uh, as many nice kindness things going on as we do shootings and evil things, boy, this world would be awesome. This country would be awesome, but sadly we didn't, and October uh, 1st, 2017 was one of the, that was a deadly example of that in Las Vegas, and, uh, you know, I just hope and pray that nothing uh, catastrophic like that happens this year, but of course, can't promise anything. I somehow have a feeling I'm going to come back next year for my 2018 year in review, and I'll be talking about another mass shooting that was catastrophic. So, um, and 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 that ma that particular mass shooting actually hit home for me. I actually knew somebody that was there at the uh, festival. Thank God they actually left the event 10 minutes before the tragedy happened. 
But boy, that had me on pins and needles when 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 that happened. Boy, did that ever. Uh, when, I, when I found out that they were okay, I was a big relief. Boy, that was that was nuts. That hit way too close to home. Especially since I've been to Vegas. I haven't stayed at the Mandalay Bay, but I've certainly been to Vegas, and I've been on the Vegas Strip many times. Well, a couple of times anyway. <laughs> Including back in 2014. Can't believe it's been four years since I rung in the uh, New Year on the Vegas Strip. It's a moment I'll never forget rung in uh, 2014 there a cool night on the Vegas Strip uh, many people last night of course including at Times Square they were it was 10 degrees at Times Square for the uh, ball drop and the celebrations on New Year's Eve I mean burr second coldest New Year's Eve uh, Times Square celebrations on record I do believe that is insane and on the personal front I did get to spend Thanksgiving with my good friend Michelle, who uh, has done countless Thanksgiving feasts in the past, and I've attended all but two of them since 2012. So that's awesome. Got to spend Thanksgiving with my good uh, friends that are almost like family to me. Uh, in uh, And Thanksgiving this year, I must add, was very, very, very warm 2017 thanksgiving is probably the warmest thanksgiving well it was the warmest thanksgiving ever for me it's probably one of the warmest thanksgivings ever for most people here on the uh, west coast because well, let me tell you what it was i kid you not it was so nice on thanksgiving day that we actually had thanksgiving outside we didn't eat indoors as we traditionally do oh no it was 84 degrees on Thanksgiving Day. We all ate outside. Had our turkey, our stuffing, our ham, all of our goodies, our dessert, all of it. We had it outside. It was so nice. And even the following day when, when I left their place, uh, I had leftover Thanksgiving feast for breakfast and I ate that outside because already at 11 o'clock in the morning on the day after Thanksgiving it was already in the low 80s again and I believe that day it was also 84 85 freaking degrees in late November and even in December uh, we normally get a rainstorm or two or three in December last year we certainly did oh, that was another thing about 2017 we had tons of rain the rainy season in 2017 was one of the wetter ones. Lots and lots of rain, lots and lots of snowpack. I thought the rain was never going to end at times. However, uh, the start to the rainy season so far this season has been very much the exact opposite. We've had very little rain. We've had a few drops here and there. Very little. Most of December was spent in a Santana wind condition, which is a when the wind comes out of the north northeast and it uh, dries out the air and it basically stays very warm uh you know temperatures in the 70s and even 80s uh even just as recently as last week late december christmas time temperatures in the san fernando valley were in the mid to upper 80s a little bit cooler than that here in bakersfield and out in the uh out in the desert but you know, we shouldn't be having these kind of temperatures in December, and yet here we were, much of December was spent in the Santa Ana wind conditions with very warm temperatures, and as a result, we also, uh, sadly, December was uh, uh, was marred by wildfires, some of which are still burning, I believe. I know one for sure is still burning. It's almost contained but it's been going for almost a month now started back on December the 3rd I do believe of 2017 and it was known as the Thomas fire and it scorched over 280,000 acres uh, making it the what second largest wildfire in California history that is insane I want to know what started that fire I know it was very windy when the fire started so it could have been anything from a down power line I just hope it wasn't arson because I always get frustrated when wildfires, especially uh, tragic uh, wildfires like that one, uh, are started by uh, arsonists. And then earlier this year, 
uh, we had a Santa Ana event. I actually forget when it was. I think it might have been in October, early November. A big wildfire event. Uh, lots of wildfires all over the place, including uh, tragic uh, wildfires up in the Santa Rosa, up in the wine country area up there. And we even had a wildfire, not really a wildfire, but a, a fire nonetheless that was not far from us here in Bakersfield. We didn't have to a evacuate though, but uh, yep, sadly the wildfire season, I don't think you can even call it a season anymore because it's now extending pretty much into December. Yeah, wildfires, December, those two sentences, those two words should not go together, but they certainly did this year. Yay for weird weather. And uh, also this year, a good friend of mine moved from Oxnard to Florida. I might, uh, you know, they uh, they uh, finally made it down there. They, they originally wanted to be down there earlier in the year, but they uh, there was a hiring freeze in the job where they were going to end up in Florida. And so that put things on hold for a while. They ended up finally getting down there in September, ironically, right as Hurricane Irma was passing through. As a matter of fact, they actually had to kind of hold, you know, their moving adventure, put, put it on hold, and hang out with their parents in Alabama for a while while Hurricane Irma did, their, did her thing. And uh, it was a big hurricane, let me tell you. Hurricane Irma came through. It basically, it affected the entire state of Florida. There wasn't a part of Florida that uh, didn't get uh, hit by Irma as far as I know all the way from Miami up through central Florida and up into uh, the edge of the state. I think the whole state got affected by that, uh, the uh, Hurricane Irma. And that wasn't the only hurricane to hit uh, this se hurricane season. You had Hurricane Harvey, which uh, basically put Houston underwater for a while uh, when, what was it? 50 plus inches of rain fell. That's 5 0 over about a five or six day period. Maybe it was a week. Either way, they were inundated with, with rain and, and whatnot. So you had Hurricane Harvey did that. Then Irma decided to make havoc with Florida. And then Hurricane Maria was a monster and decided to basically destroy Puerto Rico. And to this day, Puerto Rico is still recovering three months later. Um, three, almost four months later now, probably. Uh, that is how devastating it was. I mean, it, I believe it was a Category 4 when it hit Puerto Rico and knocked out pretty much the entire island. And I think right now they're only still at half capacity and it's very tough for them over there. I feel really bad for those guys because we don't really, you know, we're, the, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, but we don't really give them much thought. You know, I, I feel really bad. It's like, why don't we treat them like everybody else? There, I mean, if if anything on the mainland, hell, even if Hawaii went without the necessities that Puerto Rico's had to endure, I think we'd be doing something about it. But yet, Puerto Rico, we did something about it too late, but only for a little while, and now it's like, have fun, guys. You're on your own again. <laughs> Great. That's wonderful treatment of supposedly, uh, you know, U.S. people. They're a U.S. territory, and yet we, we don't, we're not treating them very well after their, what they went through. <sighs> well, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, I believe that's pretty much a, a nutshell. I always forget something when I do these year-end reviews. Um, you know, it's probably always something I forgot. We did have some uh, rocket launches from SpaceX, plenty of those. There'll be plenty more of those. Don't think we're launching uh, humans into space until, what, next year, 2019? I think that's the goal. Still, that's a long time that we've had to rely on the Russians to get people into space of ours. Our astronauts. <laughs> That's pretty wild. So there it is. There's your 2017 look back. Hope your 2017 was good for the most part. We did lose. Uh, 
I know I lost two friends, one of which I didn't know that well. The other, I almost had the chance to meet. As a matter of fact, if I had gone through with my trip a few years ago, uh, three years ago to be exact, uh, I would have met this person. Um, lived over in Virginia. Now, I, my hope is to visit the other people that lived in the same household uh, because uh, they were good people. They uh, were part of an internet station that is no more. Ironically, the internet station uh, ceased operation just after uh, the owner's death. Uh, so that was very tragic. We lost uh, two good people uh, that I knew in 2017. One was, like I said, in uh, Toonhead. Those of you that knew Toonhead, you know, he'll be missed. And then Rich Cavallero from uh, New York. I never met him, but I did talk to him. He was only 28. Sadly, he died of complications from pneumonia and such. And uh, those that knew him, he'll be dearly missed as well. So... I hope 2018 will be an awesome one. I'm hoping it, for it to be a very awesome one for me. I want to make some... I want to do some awesome things in 2018, make some awesome things happen in 2018. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Take each day as it comes and make the most of it. Make the most of your life. Enjoy it. And may everybody have a happy 2018. And by the way, I did watch the Rose Parade this year. That was pretty fun. So everybody take care, enjoy, and have a great year.